Hi folks, hope you are okay today. Uh, we're going to be looking at crossing over the Jordan and <clears throat> we're looking at uh, the book of Joshua and so if you'd like to uh, uh, close your eyes and bow in prayer and let's come before Almighty God. Father God we come before you today and we confess our sin and Father God, we acknowledge our failure and the weakness of our hearts. And we acknowledge, oh God, how much we need you, how much we need your grace, and how much we need your care. And so, Father, we pray for your forgiveness today. And we pray for your cleansing. We pray for your mercy. And Father, I pray uh, for your glory to come down upon this video, for your power to come upon every home, and every individual who hears these words and i pray father god this would be the most radical blessed video that they've ever listened to in their lives i pray that your presence would be tangible and real and powerful i pray that the holy spirit would work through every word that i say and that everybody who hears your word today would have a real sense of your presence and power and blessing and i pray father god that it would do them good that it would change them radically forever and that father your glory would shine through this video and ripples would go around the world through this video and so father i pray in your name lord and for your glory that you be with me in this study now by the power of your holy spirit save it to our hearts lord in your name amen Okay, if you'd like to turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua uh, chapter 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the, this people, unto the land which I give to them even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I have said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Be thou... Uh, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. <clears throat> this chapter is really about new beginnings. Sometimes in history, a historical event happens that brings a new beginning. We think of the Berlin Wall when the Berlin Wall came down. It gave a new beginning for East and West Germany. We think of new beginnings not only nationally, but in our local churches. Maybe a pastor's died, or maybe we've changed building, and it's a defining moment for the history of the church. Or maybe in our own individual lives, we go through situations where things have changed. We might have lost a loved one through bereavement. We might have lost a job. We might have gained a job. We might have got married or got divorced and or moved house. But it's a significant change, which means 
it propels you into a new beginning. In Joshua chapter 1, we see a new beginning. We see a defining moment in the history of Israel where they leave the desert and are now ready to enter into the promised land. And God says to Joshua on a number of occasions, be strong. If you turn to Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Then if you turn to Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Then if you turn to Deuteronomy 31, 23, this is just before Moses is about to die. Before he dies, he says these words on... So, uh, God says these words through Moses to Joshua. The Lord God gave this command to Joshua, son of Nun. Be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them. An oath, and I myself will be with you. Deuteronomy 31, 23. What's interesting, if you count how many times the Lord says to Joshua, be strong and courageous, it's about six times. Three in Joshua chapter 1 and I think 3 in Joshua chapter 31 uh, Deuteronomy 31 but at, at least uh, five times God says to Joshua be strong and courageous now you might turn around and say well Jason it's okay you're saying that I've got to be strong and courageous but you know something Jay when I look to the future I don't see a bright future for myself I feel weak I feel <clears throat> that i haven't got the resources i feel that things are perhaps going to go bad for me next year uh maybe i'm looking for a job and i don't think i'm going to find a job next year maybe you're single and you don't think you're going to have a relationship in the new year or whatever it is something has gone wrong and you're thinking that in the coming year it's going to be like that and joshua had bigger problems than you Joshua had to lead three million people. Three million people. He had to provide their food and their resources. On top of that, he had to go over Jordan River. Now, at that time, Jordan River was at full tide. And so even if you had an army, you couldn't really cross that river. Then if you did cross the river, you had seven nations to fight. You had seven nations to deal with. You had an impossible uh, situation. You had three million people to provide for. You had a river to cross. And then you had seven nations to fight. And Joshua could have stood where he was and given in and given up. But he didn't. And the reason why he didn't give up is simply this. Because Joshua had a great big view of God. You see, Joshua saw God had met the needs of Israel in the desert. He saw that God fed them with the manna from heaven. He saw how God brought water out of a rock. He saw how God led by the pillar of fire. He saw God at work and he saw that his God was a great God. And so he went to do the Lord's will. God is a great God, and I think the thing for you and me today that we have to realize if we're going to go across the Jordan in our lives, we've got to get a big vision of God. If you turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, chapter 8. I'm preaching quietly because uh, family are asleep and uh, I'm trying to give uh, my brother uh, Tommy Hall uh, a bit of peace. He, I do get a bit excited and uh, I want him to relax a little bit, but uh, maybe after Christmas I'll do some fiery preaching. Anyway, Romans 8, 37, 39. 
but for his sake i'm going to be quiet tonight anyway romans 8 uh 37 39 it says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything or other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, God holds you in his hands. His love is great today for you. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? There we it's clear that we can be an overcomer, that we're not going to be defeated all the time. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews 13 verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you sorry yeah let your conversation Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee I will never leave thee nor forsake thee God will be with you in the new year Romans 4 chapter 4 verse 21 Romans 4 21 Romans 4 21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform so Abraham believed that God would fulfill his promise and God fulfilled his promise so we see here in Romans 8 a great God who loves us in 1 John five that we're overcomers in hebrews 13 5 that god will never leave us and romans 14 21 that god will keep his promises and so as you go into the new year realize that you can go over jordan because you have a great god you have a great god and it's time you realized how great this god is this god if he can supply three million israelites as they cross the jordan then can he not supply your need as you go into the new year? Okay, number one, my first point today. Number one, leave the graveyard and enter your new life. That's my first point. Leave the graveyard and enter your new life. Joshua chapter one, verse one and three. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Here in verse 1 and 3, we read about Moses. We read about that he's died. He's dead. And God is saying to Joshua, now go over into the promised land. You see, Joshua could have stayed where he was and cried and wept for Moses and thought to himself, I'll never go forward now. We've lost Moses. That's the end of us. And he could have stayed where he was and that would have been the end of him. But he didn't. There's a time to weep, but then there's a time to get on with life. And he got on with life. He got on with the battle. He got on with crossing Jordan. And some of us today, we're kind of like this person. I'm going to describe. It's not a true story. It's a story that I've invented. But we're kind of like this person. Imagine a, a young woman. And she marries a man. And she's been married for five years. And then the husband dies. And as her husband dies, for the next 12 years, every day she goes to the coffin. Uh, she goes to the tomb. She goes to the graveyard. Every day 
for 12 years she goes to the graveyard she goes to the grave and she weeps before her husband's grave and that's all she does in her life going to the grave and weeping at the grave of her husband for 12 years she does it but in that 12 years a man has fallen in love with her and he's done a few chores for her, a bit of DIY he's even made her some meals and he's tried to show her kindness after the 12 years the man is outside the graveyard and he can see this woman and she's there again knelt down before the grave of her deceased husband and it's raining and she's weeping before that grave and the man outside the graveyard cries out i love you come forth come with me i love you now she's got a choice she can either stay in the graveyard still weeping or she can get up and she can go out and live a new life with that man and that's what some of us are like some of us keep going back to the graveyard we keep going back to the tomb and we keep weeping every day but god has called us to a better life he's caught he's called us to to joy he's called us to new blessings but we still want to live in the graveyard and we still want to go to the tomb but you know something it gets even worse than that some of us are not only in a graveyard we carry our coffin round with us and as we carry that coffin round our neck we always every day open that coffin and we look in and we see a heart there and that heart has a dagger in it and it's a broken heart and we carry that broken heart in that coffin every day and we open the coffin and we look at the broken heart and we weep and that is a symbol of your life your broken dreams your broken uh, relationships, brokenness, failure, pain, suffering. All the things that were important to you, dashed, destroyed, and you open the coffin and you look in and you see your broken heart and you weep. But God has not called you to that anymore. God wants you to bury that coffin. God wants you to bury it and then he wants you to walk out of the graveyard and you've got to bury it because if you don't bury that grave if you don't bury that coffin it'll bury you and God has called you to be sons and daughters of him he's called you to a new life to new future new prospects new hopes yes your heart was broken yes your dreams were broken but God wants you to have a new heart and he wants you to have new dreams so you put that old broken heart and old dreams down into the cough into the into the sand into the soil and you bury that coffin and you receive the new heart and the new dreams of god that he has for you i'd like you to turn to ephesians chapter one ephesians chapter one verse three and nine Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 9 Ephesians chapter 1 3 and 9 you're being pulled back by fear you're being pulled back by failure you're being pulled back by regret you're being pulled back by loss of reputation of what men think of you you're being pulled back these are your coffins where you keep opening them and looking at your broken heart you keep being pulled back by them and you need to bury them and you need to focus on this Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 9 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings if you want to get your Bible get your Bible out Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 9 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 9 it says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace 
wherein he had bounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence prudence having made known unto us the mystery of the will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself if you read that chapter and read it tonight and read it every day for a few months because in it it tells you all the spiritual blessings that god has already given to you even before you were even born god had given them to you verse 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who was what he was blessed us with what all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ and you've been weeping and you've been crying and you've been opening that coffin and you've been looking at your broken heart and you've been forgetting this that blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ that you've got all blessings my friend when you go into the new year and you might feel that you haven't got the resources you might feel that your heart your dreams have been broken you go into that new year with all spiritual blessings you go into that new year with the great god who has got all spiritual blessings for you so it's time you buried that coffin it's time you walked out of that graveyard and it's time you received the blessings of god in your life it is not god's will for you to destroy your life by keep looking in the coffin it is god's will for you to enjoy his presence to enjoy his courts and to enjoy the things that he has called you for and he wants to give you in the year in the new year the spiritual blessings of god it says in we've read in, in uh, ephesians and just an aside but when you read joshua read it alongside the book of ephesians because joshua is about taking the promised land ephesians is very similar it's showing you the riches of god's grace and josh joshua it can be modeled in the book of ephesians the both both of them go together and so the blessings of god are in ephesians chapter one and god gave uh, jordan uh, gave joshua he'd already given him the land he had to just go and possess it God has already given us the blessings. We have to go and possess it by faith. So leave, number one, the graveyard and enter your new life. Number two, fight for your new life. I'm going to tell you a story about two children, one an optimist and one a pessimist. There was this mother and she had two sons and they were extreme in their behavior one was an extreme pessimist and one was an extreme optimist and she wanted to know how she could get them to just be a bit more balanced on either side so she went to see a doctor and the doctor said well at christmas uh give the pessimist brilliant presents and give the optimist a bad present and hopefully it will help them to balance their behavior so on christmas day she gave the pessimist son uh, a computer and when he saw it he was delighted when she come to the other boy who was an optimist she gave him some horse manure when he opened the present this is what he said and that's all he was getting by the way he was only getting horse manure and this is what he said when he opened the present ah i get it there's a pony you've got for me round the back. You see, if you're an optimist, you're always an optimist, no matter how dire the situation. And you know something? Too many of us are pessimists. Too many of us let our fears and our failures and our regrets dominate our future, where we don't think things are going to get better. And we have to be an optimist and if we lose that optimism that belief that god will always come through for us we will be defeated before we start how many boxers do you know or have seen that have gone into a boxing match expecting to lose you don't get into a boxing match and expecting to lose you get into a boxing match expecting to fight and win and if you don't have that mentality spiritually of, of fighting 
for the Lord, not not in a physical way, but spiritually. If you don't have that mentality, then you've lost before you started. Let us turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Notice that the Christian life is a battle. Notice in this passage, we are in warfare. We have to wage war on behalf of Almighty God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to the whole, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, stand having, uh, sorry, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereon all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You see, Paul sees that we're in a spiritual battle. We're against wickedness in high places, demonic forces that are trying to take us out. Uh, we're, we're in a tremendous battle and we have to be willing to fight spiritually. You've got to be willing to fight for your marriage. You've got to be willing to stand for your marriage. If your marriage is on the rocks, you've got to fight for it. And take time out if you're busy. Often marriages are failing because both partners are busy. And as you're busy, you don't get time to spend with each other and you're getting stressed. So make sure that you spend time with your spouse. But your kids, you've got to fight for your kids. Make sure that you teach them. The word of God, make sure that you're praying for them. You've got to fight for your church. You've got to be willing to stand with your pastors, stand with the leaders and go forward serving the Lord in your community. Nothing is ever achieved unless you're willing to fight for the Lord. Now, you might feel you would like to fight, but you don't feel strong. You don't feel that you can do it. Well, let's turn to a few scriptures that will encourage us to fight spiritually for the Lord's army. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God doesn't want you to be crippled. God doesn't want you to be crippled by fear. He wants you to go forward with boldness knowing that he's with you psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 he says i had fainted unless i believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord god is a good god and he will come through for you psalm 31 23 psalm 31 23 oh love the lord all you who saints for the lord what preserves the faithful and plentifully rewards the proud doer be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart all you that hope in the lord turn to uh, 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 verse 4 it says I thank my God always on behalf for the grace of sorry 2 Corinthians sorry my fault 2 Corinthians chapter 1 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. 
we are comforted by God. God is a God of all comfort, and he will comfort you. And as he comforts you, you will be able to go forward into battle in the new year. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might be might depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me in weakness we're made strong so you might feel you would like to battle but you don't feel that you can because you haven't got the strength well my friend 2 Timothy 1 7 God has given us a sound mind not to fear Psalm 27 God has said that he's good in Psalm 31 we're seeing a God who will come through for us in 2 Corinthians 1 4 we see a God who's a comforter in 1 Peter 5 7 we see a God who will cast take our cares upon himself and in 2 Corinthians 12 8 9 though we are weak we are strong go into the new year as an optimist not a pessimist Go into the new year believing as you go over the river Jordan of your life that God is with you, that God will back you up, that God will give you strength, that God is a good God and he loves you and he will be with you and he will take care of you and you will win the battle of life. Put the whole armor of God on the truth of the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, the, sal the helmet of salvation. Put all the spiritual armor on that God has given you. Faith, have faith, prayer, intercession. All these things God has given us to do that we go into battle knowing that God is with us, that God is a great God and will supply every need that we have. So, number one, we get out of the graveyard and enter into our new life. Number two, we fight for our new life. And number three, we be equipped in your new life. Let's turn to Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God is saying to Joshua, look, when you go over the river Jordan, make sure that you meditate on my word. The word meditation, the Hebrew word there, the idea is musing. The idea is rolling over the word of God in your mind, pondering it slowly, chewing over it about how it relates to your life, how it relates and how you can obey it. It's not just intellectualism. It's far more practical and deeper than that. It's musing. It is chewing over the word of God in your mind and heart. So Joshua, as you go over the river Jordan, chew over my word. Chew over my word. Billy Graham's uh, father-in-law, Dr. Bell, spent two hours a day in the Word of God. A.W. Tozer would go down to the river 
brook and study the word of God for hours. Watchman Nee would spend hours and hours in the word of God. Oswald Chambers would spend hours and hours in the word of God. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones would spend hours in the Word of God. Martin Luther, John Calvin would spend hours in the Word of God. Wycliffe would spend hours in the Word of God. William Tyndale would spend hours in the Word of God. The early church fathers were absolutely soaked in the Word of God. John Chrysostom, Athanasius, my friend. All the great servants of the law throughout history were people who were soaked in the word of God. Nobody achieved anything great for the kingdom in, in the history of the church unless they were people who were men and women soaked in the word of God. And my friend, that's what you need to be in this new year. You need to soak yourself in the word of God. You need to be saturated this year with the word of God. If you're going to enter into your new life in this coming year, You've got to be equipped, and the only way to be equipped is to be soaked in the Word of God. Let's turn. I'm, I'm using the King James here. The NIV has not got a good uh, translation for one or two of these verses here. But 1 Peter chapter 2. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Using the King James. 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 2. 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of what? Of the word that you may grow thereby. If you're a young believer, you've got to desire the sincere milk of the word. Just as a baby needs milk, so you, when you're born again, need the milk of the word of God to grow. My friend, as a young believer, get into the word of God. Let's go to Job 23, 12. Job 23.12 Job 23.12 It's just before the Psalms Job 23.12 Job 23.12 Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. This is Job concerning the word of God. The word of God was like food to him. Precious. Psalm 119 verse 11. The word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 1. Let's look at Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. What happens when, about the law? He meditates day and night, day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind rideth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Here in the psalm, the success of the psalmist's life is all concerning the meditation of the word of God. As we meditate on that, we become like a tree planted in rivers of water in the desert. We could look at Psalm 37, verse 31, Psalm 119, verse 97, and Jeremiah 15, 16. These are other scriptures that uh, teach us about uh, the word of God. But 
you need to ground your marriage in the word of god as a couple you need to be in the word of god together studying the word together praying together reading and devotionally the word of god together and obeying the word of god together whatever the word of god says as a couple you need to obey it but also you need to be teaching your children your grandchildren the word of god in ministry as leaders and leadership team uh, pastors and elders you need to be teaching the word of god to each other so that you're grounded in it and as a church you need to be studying the word of god you need to be uh, in the word of god i just want to say this that those who are pastors and preachers today if you're going to do a good job in pastoring and preaching you need to be studying the word of god and put the work in for example this sermon that i've done here today i started the sermon preparation for this sermon uh yesterday right about 12 o'clock in the afternoon so at 12 o'clock in the afternoon i started studying this passage and i didn't finish the studying of it until about half past 10 in the evening that's how many hours i put into preparing this sermon so that you could be fed spiritually through this ministry that i'm doing today for you i prepared the sermon and i preached it at my local church this sunday morning and I'm preaching it again in, in the evening. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to be a pastor, if you're going to be a preacher, if you're going to be an elder who's ministering the word, you need to be studying that word and, and getting uh, new material, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to teach you the word of God. But you need to be digging, digging the word of God. It's a, it takes about at least eight hours or more to prepare a good sermon. Now, I, I believe that God can give you a sermon by the power of the Holy Spirit in a second. You can be preparing a sermon, get into the pulpit, and the Holy Spirit will give you a new sermon. The Holy Spirit can do that. He is powerful, and he does do that. But also, the Holy Spirit blesses hard work. And you can't download unless you upload. You can't receive from the Holy Spirit unless you're uploading the Word of God. And as you're soaked in the Word of God, as you're soaked in the Word of God, As you're soaked in the word of God. Just be one second. Just be uh, with you in a second. So I'm just going to uh, just uh, send in uh, uh, an invitation to uh, a brother in Christ there. So we've got to be soaked in the word of God in our marriage, uh, in, in ministry. Hi, Richard. Hello, Jace. You all right, mate? How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'll just kill my Skype a second because I. Uh, okay. I, it kills my connection else. It's good to be with you, mate. And you, buddy, how's it going? Okay, thanks. It, I'm I'm just going to finish this off and then I'll I'll leave it to you to share your thoughts on what I've said. Is that okay, bro? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I'll just uh, I'll shut I'll shut up a minute. <laughs> I'll just finish off what I was saying and then I'll just recap. It'll only take five minutes five at the maybe ten at the most and then i'll just 
and then I'll just ask you what your thoughts of what I've said or if you want to share something. Is that all right? Sure, mate. Yeah, because I'm just coming in, so I don't know what you've been talking about yet. So I'll listen to what you have to say for a bit. So, guys, I was just saying that um, as we go over the River Jordan, Joshua was given uh, the command to go forward and, and to meditate on the Word of God. And the word meditate, the idea is musing. We, we chew over the Word of God. We soak ourselves in the Word of God. And if we're going to be successful, we've got to be soaked in the Word of God as in our marriages or uh, in, in our children, uh, in our ministries, whatever we're doing, let's be soaked in the Word of God. Now, we come to the end now, and I just want to look at two scriptures. Um, so we'll look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 10. Have you got a Bible, job, uh, uh, Richard? Richard? Yep, sorry, I'm here. Sorry about that. Have, um, you, have you got a Bible? Yeah. Yeah, uh, what was it, Colossians? Could you read Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 10? Just a second, let me just get my, reach my Bible. One second. So that's Colossians chapter 3. That. Thanks. Mate. Colossians chapter 3. All right, so look. 1 to 10. Right. <clears throat> Where are my Galatians? One or two. It's Colossians before Galatians, isn't it? I think. Corinthians. Uh. It's after Philippians and before 1 Thessalonians. Right. Here we go. Sorry about this, you caught me unaware. <laughs> Thessalonians uh, 1 and 2 you want, is it? Uh, chapter 3. Oh, sorry. <laughs> chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Chapter 3. Uh, is this concerning uh, their faith? Is this the one? If you then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above. Is that on. No, I've got... Uh, Colossians. Wherefore, when we could go no further. Was it 3 verse 10, did you say? Colossians chapter 3. Yep. Oh, Colossians. Oh, I went to see it's Thessalonians. There you go. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit late late for me, you know. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, mate. Uh, verse Sorry one. about that. All right, Colossians. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand side, on the right hand of God, set your affections on the on things above, not things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, when shall ye also appear with him in glory? Mortify therefore your members with uh, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, inordinate affections, evil cons concipation, what does I say? Conce conceptions and uh, con uh, convention, what does it say? Covetousness. Covetousness. <laughs> Where am I to? Uh, which, is which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In which you also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now you also put off all the uh, put off these things, uh, put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that ye where have I gone? Seeing that ye put off the old man with his deeds. That's good, isn't it? And have put on the new man, which is renewing in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Thanks, Josh. So, put off the old man, walk in the new man, walk in the spiritual blessings. It says in verse 10, have 
and have put on the new man which is what renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him so stop living in the past stop living in the old life but move now into the new life that Christ has for you and then one more passage Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14 Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 uh, Ephesians Philippians chapter 3 uh, verse 12 to 14 and we read these words it says not as though I had already attained either were already perfect but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus so he forgets the past and he moves forward and he presses on and that's what the book of Joshua at the beginning of that chapter one is all about Joshua was told to be strong and courageous and to go forward over Jordan and you can go over Jordan in your life today no matter what you're facing no matter what troubles you're facing, no matter what pain, what difficulty, whatever you're going through at this moment in time, you have a great God and you've got a great future, so you go over that Jordan of life and you get on with it and leave the past behind. In chapter 1, in our first part, we look to get it out of the graveyard, leaving the past behind, leaving those things that have pulled you back behind. Bury them, put them down in the ground and leave that graveyard we talked about fighting it's a spiritual warfare we need to be intercessories interceding we need to be grounded in the truth in the gospel we need to be fighters believing that God is with us believing that we can take back the ground uh, in our local churches in our communities we can spread the gospel we can take the ground because God is with us so let's be fighters let's teach the word of God let's preach the word of God let's go out there and believe in the power of God that he can change lives, that it can bring healing and hope to people, that it can do new things in people's lives. And then thirdly, go into the new year equipped. You'll never achieve anything unless you're soaked in the Word of God. We have to be soaked in that Word. So, thank you for listening everybody. I'm going to just ask uh, Richard if he's got anything to share um, about Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, uh, 1 to 9. If we go back to that, and we'll, we'll get Richard to look at that passage. I'll just read it again, and then I'll let Joshua just share, uh, let uh, uh, Richard share um, a thought or two. Um, so Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass the Lord spoken to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of my life. As I was Moses, so I will be with thee, and I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, and thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper um, whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt have thy good success. So, Josh, do you, uh, sorry, uh, Richard, do you want to share anything there, mate? Uh, I think you did a good job. Um, uh, I, I really just mirror what you said a moment ago. I think um, 
for Moses and Joshua and his people, the people he was leading. I think that was a um, a real physical battle, whereas today we you know we have to really focus upon it as a spiritual battle that we're fighting today um, in yeah. our day and age. But the same um, laws apply that don't turn you know don't turn away from the law, and uh, we're seeing people who turn away from the law, just like Jesus said, there are many who fall away. We're seeing that people who fall away from the law, the initial law, which God set, um, you know, they're really, you know, it's a, uh, it's downhill spiral from there. So, really, it's bringing into focus that it's a spiritual battle today, but it also has a physical side. But it's not to enter into uh, physical assaults and stuff like we saw, you know, in the time of Joshua, time of Moses and these people. Mm. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts? Anything else you want to share? Well, I apologise. I'm a bit late coming in, but uh, really what I had in mind was a different subject, but uh, it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I haven't been reading Joshua recently. I've been reading the book of Daniel, so I'm a bit uh, <laughs> my mind somewhere else, you know. <laughs> I would say it's interesting, you know, you read Joshua and what he did. Um, yeah. It brings into into immediate view, I think, for anyone reading this book this evening, re, uh, watching or listening along to your hangout. Um, you know it, how much of, of Christ is in the Old Testament, mm. and um, how much that God loves His people, and that's the real um, oh, the real daunting view, if you like, because you see it so prominent uh, prominent in the in these Old Testament. Um, um, historical t stories, mm. and um, you know they're real documented events, and uh, it really shows. I mean, to this day, God's love for His people. Mm. Mm. That's what I get from it. Amen. 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 I, th I think for me, what I got got out of this is is the greatness of God. Is um, how we we can get we can get pulled down by. Whatever negativity is coming around us, uh, whatever that might be, and it pulls us down, and it, and that can go on for a long time. And I was just thinking about Joshua that he could have, he could have uh, thrown in the tower. I mean, he had millions of people to look after. He had to go over the River Jordan, and then he had to lead the people into fighting seven nations. But yet, he, he really believed in a great God, and, and God looked after him. God supplied him and the people's needs and uh, mm. the interest in that they only took God gave them the land they only took 30% of the land when they went in the other 70% they they just started to relax and chill out and didn't take the rest of the land and that's like us God has given us so much so much spiritual blessing so so much but we leave ourselves poorer because we're not willing to dive into and plunge into what God has for us uh, and we settle for for only a little when we can really press into God and really know more of him and more of his ways so I'd encourage people next year do it now but to press into God uh, and, and to discover uh, the plans, the purposes that he has for you through his word um, so I'd encourage that so Absolutely I'll, I'm going to close in prayer, uh, but before I close in prayer, how are you doing, Richard? It's good to hear you, Rob. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm doing good. Cheers. And, uh, you know, uh, you're sounding good as well. I just uh, a thought come to mind, you know, you speak about God delivering his people and being led by Joshua. You know, Joshua's name means that Jesus saves. And that's, uh, <laughs> again, it's just uh, a nice little thing to dwell upon. Amen. Amen. So everybody who's going to hear this video, are you going over the Jordan or are you just going to sit down? you got to go over that Jordan. Forget the past now. Don't let anything negative pull you back. Go for it 100% for God uh, in this mm. year. So uh, should we have a prayer time, Just uh, Sorry, Richard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Should we have a prayer time together? Just pray for whatever we feel led to pray for. Maybe. Yeah, I, th I, 
I think we need to pray, you know, for people to um, to not become, like you say, satisfied with uh, thinking this is all God's got for you. God's got so much in in view for people, you know, and uh, it's the blessings that people um, people want God, but they, you know, they become comfortable in where they are. And when things come, when the wind comes blowing and knocks them down a bit, they, um, you know, they can lose sight. But it's keeping your eye on God. And um, I think it's these people we need to pray for. People who th- feel like um, maybe they're, maybe, you know, they're, they're a bit um, disconnected from God. Maybe, you know, they need to be brought back to where the God wants them to be and where they should be because that's where the blessing is hmm. right with the Lord Amen Amen just feel free to pray then uh, Richard and we just pray hmm. well Lord we're here tonight with um, with Jason I thank you Lord it's uh, it's good to speak to my uh, a brother in Christ it's good to um, speak to people of like-minded, um, steadfast position, and uh, Lord, here we are together, Lord, and um, we've just been thinking about Joshua and how you led him, and you, and he was used as your instrument, Lord, to to move your people, Lord, to where you want them to be. We pray, Lord, that you'll use us, Lord, to encourage people, to feed the flock, also to plant seeds, Lord, and get involved in harvesting too. And we're, we're happy and we're, we're full of joy, Lord, wherever you put us, Lord. And, you know, we just pray, Lord, that you'll keep pushing the Holy Spirit upon us so we can hear you, Lord, and we'll be moved in the right ways to really help people and show that love, Lord, that you've given to us to, to other people who haven't seen it yet, who haven't yet come to know you, Lord. To people who have become disconnected from you, Lord, that they might hear your word again, Lord, and hearken to it, and really start to seek you, Lord, in your mysteries, Lord, in your wonder, Lord, in your splendor. Mm. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mm. Father, we thank you in our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one. We Praise thee, O Father. We give thee the glory and the honor. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you died at Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that you shed your blood. We thank you for your stupendous grace, your stupendous Mm. love. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness to us. We just thank you for your blessings. We thank you for all your goodness to us. We give you the prayers. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord, we are rich beyond compare. Such blessings the blessings of the living God, the blessings of the Holy Spirit, the blessings of salvation, the blessings Mm -hmm. of knowing you. You are our God and you're with us today. And Father, as we go into the new year, and as we come to the end of the old one, and as we go into the new one, Lord, we thank you for speaking to us that we've got to let the past go, the old things go. We've got to stop letting them bury us, and we've got to bury them, and we've got to get out of the graveyard and move into the spiritual blessings of our God and Father we thank you that you've reminded us of that we thank you that you've given us a commission to go over the Jordan and to take the land you've given us a commission it says go into all the world and make disciples and you said Lord I'm with you always and so Father you've given us that commission to go forward to take the land to see boys and girls men and women come to know you and come to be servants of you ministers of you Lord to use their gifts to serve you in the kingdom. And so, Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for my brother. Lord, I pray that you would refresh him. I pray that you would renew him. I pray that you would strengthen him. I pray that you would guide him. I pray that you would be with him in everything that he does. I pray, Lord, whenever he gets discouraged, you would strengthen him. And, Father, I pray as he goes into the new year that he would know that he goes in with a mighty God a powerful God who is with him and loves him. And I pray, Lord, everything that he does, you will guide and you will bless him. Father, refresh him. Father, renew him. Father, strengthen him. Father, fill him with your Holy Spirit daily with your power 
Father, speak to him. Give him voices, Lord. Tell him clearly things that you want him to know and things that you want him to do. And Father, I pray that you send people to him who would encourage him. I pray that you bless his ministry. I pray that you bless his family. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bring comfort and healing tonight in his life. Father, refresh and renew him. And we pray this for our brothers and sisters today. And Father, we just pray for all those on the internet that we know. That mm. those who claim the name of Christ, we pray for each one that they would grow in you. Each one that they would be strong in you. Each one that they would follow you. Each one that they would look to you, the great and living God. And Father, we pray for our enemies and those who would try to pull us down. We pray that you would bless them. We pray that you would surround them with your mercy. We pray that they would come to know you and trust in you as their Lord and Savior. We pray, Lord, for each brother and sister who are trying to serve you on the Internet, that you would bless their ministries, that, Father, they be guided and blessed by you, that we would see souls saved and people born again, people coming to know you as Lord and Savior people that were healed in mind and body, people restored, restored in the living God, restored and renewed. Those lives that have been robbed by the devil will be taken back and renewed in you, Lord, and mm -hmm. given a new life, that you, they are new creatures in you, Lord. And so, mm -hmm. Father, we pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to fall upon mm -hmm. the YouTube and upon every Christian who runs the YouTube channels, Lord, and we pray... Mm -hmm for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We pray for revival and power upon those YouTube channels. We pray, Father God, for mighty blessing. We pray mm. for unity, that we would work together, that we would stand together, that we would be united. We pray that we would walk in the Holy Spirit and in the fruit of the Spirit. We pray mm. that we would be guided by the Spirit. We pray, pray that we would hear what the Spirit is saying through your word. We pray, yes. Lord, that we would hear. We would have ears to hear when to make a video, when not to make a video, who to talk to, who not to talk to. Yes. We pray that everything that we do would be for your glory, that we yes. would go into the new year, whatever video we ever make, all of us, it would be for your glory, that it mm. would be for your honor, because there are, there is a heaven and there is a hell. People will go to hell and they will be tortured forever because they rejected the mighty living God. And Father, this is serious business. And we're not here to play games. We're here to bring glory to your name. We're mm. here to bring honor to you. And so, Father, we pray that every video that Richard has made, everything that he does in the future, and that goes for every one of us, Lord, that you would use it to rescue people from the dominion of darkness and bring mm. them into the light of Christ. And so, yes. Father, we ask for your blessing. We ask for revival amongst YouTube, amongst the Internet, amongst your people. Yes. That we would be renewed and that we would cross the Jordan and that we would take the land in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory because we know that we go forward, even though we go forward in weakness, we go forward with a mighty, powerful God. We go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. We go forward in the name of Jesus we go forward as victorious people today. Yes, we will not let darkness pull us down. We will not let depression pull us down. We will not let nothing pull us down. We will go forward in the light of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We are surrounded with his light. We are surrounded with his blessings. All things work together for good to them that love God. We are adopted into the family of God. God is our father and we are his children. And as his children we can come to you. And we can cry, Abba, Father. And Lord, all things are well. We might not have all that we would want, but we have everything that we need. You supply all our needs. We pray for the persecuted church in Syria, in Iraq, and around the world today. And we pray for every one of those who have been persecuted, that you would give great comfort to them and help them, Lord. And we pray against those who would persecute the church, that their counsel would be brought to naught. That, Father God, you would tear apart any of any forces that would try to destroy your little lambs. And, Father, we pray that they would be saved, that they would come to know you. But if they will not yield to you, we pray that their counsel would be brought to naught. 
And so, God, we pray, protect your little lambs. We pray that you would protect them. Oh, God, roar in this new year. Roar as you, as you come and do your work in this world, Lord. Show this world that you are king. Show this world that you are God. And make this world see that you are not asleep, that you are alive, that you are the living God. And we will go in to this new year believing in the living God the powerful God, the God of Moses, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. We will go forward believing and expecting great things because we believe in a great God. We ask this, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory, Lord, may you be honored, may you be glorified. We are nothing, we are just flesh, we are fools, we are nothing, Lord, but we are something in you. We are children of you, we are born again. We have all the blessings of God in you, Lord. And so we are refreshed tonight. We are renewed tonight. And we have hope tonight. We have the blessed hope. And we have the hope of a good God who will meet every need as we go into the new year. Yes, we ask these things, Lord. And may you be honored now each day in our lives. We will cross that Jordan and we will never look back again. We will never look back at our failures. We will never look back at the darkness. We will never look back at the broken dreams. We're going to look forward to the new hope, the new future that you have for each one of us. And we're going to do valiantly for our God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So what are you Amen. Doing? Oh, <coughs> Richard, are you with the family? Sorry, mate. Can you repeat? Sorry, I didn't hear that last what, thing. What are you doing at Christmas? Have you? Are you having Christmas dinner or anything? Or um, I think we're having. Uh, I'm going to my mother's house and we can have um, a turkey. I think she's cooking, so that'd be nice. Oh, good, good. Yeah, Pray, love Christmas dinner. <laughs> for me, I've, I've got to organise the Christmas meal for our church, and we've got three turkeys being cooked at three different places. Gosh. <laughs> wow. Try. Coordinate three turkeys from three different directions of Manchester to get them oh, in time. <laughs> Are you cooking all three? No, no, no. I've, I've, there's one being cooked where I live. Yeah. But, uh, there's one I've got someone's cooking in the church, and then we've got a guy who I've only met twice, but is a connected to the church, and he's cooking a turkey. I don't know where he lives. Uh, so I've got to get the turkey to the guy. Uh, who I don't know where he lives, and then hopefully he's cooking his, and uh, we can get... He can be a delivery man. Yeah, yeah. And, I've got, <laughs> and at the same time as I pick up these turkeys and get them to the church, well, hopefully someone will pick one of the turkeys and I'll get two. Uh, yeah. I'll pick up a lady, which will be like, that'll take an hour, and I've got to pick up another person, which will take about 20 minutes, so it's going to be a busy day. Gosh. You got your plan set out. <laughs> and, uh, we've got someone cooking the veg. I got my uncle coming down helping cooking and uh, yeah, and I'm wrapping presents up for little kids who were coming on Christmas Day as well. So oh, lovely! <laughs> oh, wonderful! That's great. So it's good for me. It keeps me busy. So yeah, that's the best way. Is keep busy. Yeah, it's, you're blessing a lot of people. So that's brilliant. So um, I don't know if I'll talk to you before then, but if I don't talk to you, have a good Christmas, and I hope to catch up with you, uh, Richard. We should do more of this, mate. We should spend time praying more. Certainly, and yes, absolutely. Uh, and get, keep away from the, the drama of these. We won't mention. <laughs> no, don't mention. <laughs> this is more refreshing than getting in the Word and being together, isn't it, mate? Well, this is what it's all about. I mean, it's you know, it's coming together and enjoying the Lord. I mean, this is is there's nothing better. I mean, this nothing compares to this. Yeah. And if, you know, people watching this or listening to this, as it were, you know, it's this is you know, you've got to experience enjoying the Lord. I mean, this is what it's all about. God's made us to enjoy Him, yeah. and it's it, there's so much joy in the Lord. I mean, nothing compares to this. Yeah. This is what it's all about. Yeah, having communion with your brothers and your sisters, um, you know, praying together, focusing on the word, 
you know, gaining knowledge of the Lord through His Word, it's just, it's, it's uh, a joy beyond compare. It really is, and it's a privilege to be here with you, uh, Jason. It's lovely um, right. uh, being with you, and uh, yeah, I've really, I've really enjoyed. It, even though I've been here for a short time, you have to um, give me a heads up next time you're gonna yeah. do it, and uh, you know, I can, I can get my Bible open and start, um, you know really getting down into it with you, that'd be a really good really good uh, thing to do. Definitely. Next time I come on I'll send you a link, mate. Cheers, that'd be brilliant. Alright mate. I'm gonna go. I wanna thank everybody who will listen to this, who is listening. There's only a couple of people, but there will be more I think uh, over the coming few days to watch the video and I just want to thank people who are going to listen to it. I wanna thank uh, Richard for coming and uh, sharing. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. So thanks everybody. It's Better to be in the Word of God than these silly hangouts where we're arguing, going round and round the houses with people who were just really, at the end of the day, not really interested. This is much better to get into yeah. the Word and pray together. We'll achieve more. So, Richard, thanks a lot, mate. I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea. And uh, God bless you. And uh, yeah, I'll God see you before you Christmas. I'll definitely send you a link after we're doing a study, yeah? Cheers, will do. Have a merry, blessed Christmas, Jason. You too, bro. God bless. Thanks for coming, mate. God bless. God bless. Boise, boise. Bye. Bye.